Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to this week's Countryside programme here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kerry Kermud. Last week I popped along to a farm tour at Peter Kameen's in the Coronary and Mackled. And I talked to John Dog about how things have been on the wild flower front on the island. And also I went and spoke to Craig Brinkley who is a gardener from the north of the Isle of Man, who's opening this garden for charity this Saturday. Well, another week has gone by. Uh, some things are uh, getting a little bit back to normal. There's been a bit of a hoolie up the north of the Isle of Man for the young farmers, uh, young and old. Uh, so uh, it's, it's nice to see something returning to normal. And Life has gone on on the farm. The weather's been not too bad. Kale is growing in the field next to us, so something must be doing right. Yeah, the, the green crops are coming on nicely and a lot of silage, second cut silage has been getting done down with us. as we has been a nice spell in the weather there. Um, I think farmers are generally quite quiet at the minute. But like you say, the young farmers getting back to their old ways, that party at uh, Andreas. I think that was a really exciting date in the calendar for all the young ones to get back together again. Yeah, and it's, uh, I suppose... Uh for, for my age sort of people you come to terms with it but it must be frustrating for the younger people who are who are raring to go and get out isn't it I do think that they really did struggle a lot my younger mm. brother Caesar uh, I know how much he missed his school friends and only for the, the Zoom app and the house party apps you know they I think they would have really really struggled missing their friends and it's quite funny Simon how many people went back to school again when they didn't necessarily have to mm. I know the attendance was fantastic but it just shows the change in in the younger people today they need their friendship groups they do indeed well this saturday is your chance to go and visit a garden up by jerby church uh, craig brinkley from snaefell garden services the man behind it all he's a gardener of course and he's done a lot of work in his own garden uh, with various ideas in the three and a half acres i think he's got there so i popped along to have a word with craig and have a look around the garden and see what people could expect this saturday it's quite exciting. Um, I've got a three and a half acre garden that I'm opening up to raise money for the Isle of Man Air Ambulance. You're a keen gardener and that's your life, that's your business. I suppose when we talk about lots of mechanics and builders, they're the last people to keep their houses and cars in order. But you've certainly managed to do that as well as work and, uh, you know, away from your own garden. Yeah, it has been busy. Um, not been very well because of it. <laughs> But I'm alright now. Now you've showed me some pictures uh, before when you moved into the house here and uh, and what you've done to it now is quite a transformation. Yeah, um, I'm planning on putting some information up on pallets just to give people an idea of what it looked like before they come around the back to see the grand reveal. The thing is, when when you walk around a garden, you don't really, you know, to, to me as a non-gardener really, you don't get uh, the sort of information that doesn't go in your brain. But when, when a gardener and somebody who's passionate and knows about it tells you all the little intricate details, it makes such a difference to how your garden looks and, and what work and what planning has gone into it, I suppose. It does, yeah. And uh, I'll obviously be here on the day, so if anyone's got any questions... I'll try and answer them. <laughs> <laughs> You've kept a, a good Manx theme with it as well, Craig, haven't you? Yeah, I'm quite proud of the uh, front garden in the sense I've got the three legs made of uh, Bucks's hedging. Um, and then around it I've planted uh, red flowers um, to represent the Manx flag with hints of uh, yellow and white. Yeah, and it's a fairly unique feature. You've got... Uh, a motorcycle tyre here sitting in front of me well with a map of the TT course um, obviously uh, the TT is a passion as well yeah we've been coming here for six years we marshal the TT and we were like we need to move here so we moved here in October last year and the the the, the tyre's got a unique TT uh, connection to uh, yeah it's uh, our friend Tom Whedon who I sponsor during TT, who's a very good friend of ours as well. Yeah, and you've got, as the Manx people call it, a palm tree, a couple of palm trees here, but they're not really palm trees, are they? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, don't, don't shatter the illusion Sorry. there. <laughs> but the uniqueness as well, I mean, when we were kids, the agricultural people listening will know we used to go and cut with an old reaper 
uh, the meadows around the Curragh there and they used to bale it for a, a meadow hay they call it and you've left some of the bits uh, you've cut the grass very short but you've left that sort of natural bits here as well which when you see it in contrast looks terrific it does it's a really good contrast like you were saying against the cut grass it's uh, also just to help wildlife um, obviously I was going to hopefully do uh, some wild flowers in them but they failed this year so next year hopefully yeah, a little pond there what's in that one uh, I've got a water lily that's four years old um, I brought that across uh, with me it's outgrown its pot so um, I thought I know what I'm gonna put a pond in um, and now we've got actually frogs in the garden right so and you've got um, a lot obviously we're quite close to Jerby Church here now and you've got a, a big stone set in in one of the places which sort of I don't know, does it resemble the gravestones that are the next door? That's a good point. <laughs> um, it could do, yeah. Um, I just love, like, Manx stone. I, I just love, yeah, Manx stone walls, yeah, yeah, everything about it. And you've got, uh, away from the garden, you've got at the back of it, a uh, bit of a, well, I'll call it a miniature forest, plus a, a unique feature in that as well from the, from the war days. Yeah, uh, our back garden uh, backs onto like a woodland area that's got the World War II pillbox in it. Yeah. Um, very good condition, actually. One of the things that strikes me, being a Jerby person, and people from Jerby will know this, how unique it is that you found a part that's got a beautiful sunny area with a lovely garden, a beautiful shaded wooden area, and mostly quite sheltered how did you manage that <laughs> uh i think it, we were just quite lucky that a sense uh the woodland uh, provides quite a lot of shelter for us providing the winds in the right place <laughs> yeah. right direction um that was planted i believe in 1981 by the forestry board and when we arrived last year you couldn't actually walk uh through half of it so i had to Clear that away. Clear that well. away. Well, Took you've six been six days. <laughs> you've been a busy. Uh, you've been a busy man, certainly. But this Saturday, then, what time uh, is it on from, and uh, who's going to be here, and what uh, what's available? Uh, it will start at ten o'clock. Uh, finish at five. Uh, we'll have Isle of Man Air Ambulance staff here to answer any questions. Um, please give donations it will help them it's a good cause there'll be information of what they provide uh, not many people know what exactly they do provide um, then we'll have the health minister he's coming up for a little while uh, teas and coffees and homemade cake oh so it's uh, be assured to be there i'm sure the sun will be shining as well craig i hope so good luck with it <laughs> thank you well, Craig Brinkley there from Snaefell Garden Service open in the garden up to the public, and it's one of them worrying things, I suppose, uh, Kiri, isn't it? Where it's your own work, and there's loads to see there, so much different. You know, there's lots of gardens with just thousands of flowers, but this is just that little bit different and a great idea. And when people do have ideas in gardens, um, they really, really do put them out there. They're so flamboyant. If they've got that acreage where they can develop their plans and ideas, and I'm sure people will really, really love getting out and about again now. And you know, the, the Flower Festival is so exciting on the Isle of Man, isn't it? So this is you know, the start of a great summer ahead, hopefully. Yeah, so that's this Saturday, uh, which uh, all gets underway at 10 o'clock. Be signposted. Just head up towards Jerby Church. There's the last house on the left. Well, you've been uh, at, at the Corny scratching. <laughs> I certainly have. That. With Farmer Pete. Uh, the famous Isle of Man farmer there for his compost and his free-range eggs. But Peter Kameen, he's trying to do something a little bit different. He's a gardener uh, by day, by trade, and uh, farming there at night time with his small holding of large black pigs. Well, I popped along last Monday where he has an evening farm tour, and I caught up with Peter to see what was going on. Well, another fantastic turnout for your evening tours. Tell us a bit about where this idea came from. Well, Kerry, it started um, last year, really, because uh, I'm a contract gardener and we were just getting loads and loads of green waste, hedge trimmings and grass cuttings and they were just piling up all over the place and we didn't really know what to do with it. 
and taking it to the amenity sites was a no-go um, because you're commercial. And then, of course, there's a cost involved in taking it to uh, Middle River or, or, or wherever it is. So we decided to, uh, to get some rare breed large black pigs to help out with the situation. And they really have. What a great job they do of your green waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they're a bit like humans, really. They like, uh, they like occupation, so they get some nutritional value from the green waste. And then they lie on it and, well, do what they do on it. <laughs> and, then, and then we drag it out of the pens and, uh, and start turning it and make really uh, high-value compost out of it, really good quality uh, organic compost. Now, this, you just explained to us all, is a great, great night here. You know, we have seen it firsthand. We've seen the pigs eating the green waste. We've seen the processes that you've been working on quietly behind the scenes for a little while yeah. to now have the product here for us all to look at and to even go home with as yeah. well. Do you think this is, a, is certainly a market that's um, opened up on the island recently, more local produce? Well, it is a locally locally produced product. Uh, compost is is a is a is, is big business. You know, everybody everybody wants a, a bag or two of compost, either for the pots or their gardens or whatever. Everywhere sells it. Supermarkets, all the wholesalers sell compost from Ireland, from England, from everywhere. So, why not buy something local? <laughs> Absolutely. And also, the, tonight, the pigs have gone down an absolute storm. That starscape. Oh, what a boy. I'm a little bit disappointed because uh, I, threw the, I threw the grass clippings in before we uh, before we done this trick and jumped on the gate tonight. So uh, <laughs> I'll, have to have a, I'll have to have a good talk with them after everybody's gone. <laughs> but not only that, you've got a, a full family of pigs here. You've got the mummy pigs, the, the daddy pigs, and now we're waiting for Black Magic. She's only days away from having her litter of pigs. But there's future plans for these little guys. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to uh, have uh, have a fattening unit in the back of the in the back of what was a dairy cubicle shed. Um, the plan is in my mind. We're just waiting for for the for the equipment to arrive, and hopefully by the time uh, Black Magic's children are weaned, they will go straight into a fattening unit, and then in 16 or 18 weeks they'll hopefully find their way to Isle of Man meets. So uh, that is the that is the general the general plan. And that's something that you've been in touch with in the past, Peter. You've been a butcher. You enjoy that side of the business as well. So this it is fully farm to fork with you. Absolutely, yeah. From uh, the full full circle of life, and uh, believe it or not, Kerry, all the babies without counting me chickens before they hatch, all the babies in uh, Black Magic's uh, tummy are more or less all sold already. So um, there is a great demand for Manx for Manx produce. So uh, let's try and embrace it and, and go forward. And also tonight, Peter, we've enjoyed a great hospitality. We have had some fantastic uh, burgers and sausages here from Balahig and also an array of garden furniture and plants and other stalls. Yeah, uh, we have uh, garden plants and trees, Manx grown trees from Brian Cooley at Kew Gardens. Ed and Kath have come along with uh, with uh, wood turning products, bowls, and all sorts of things. A bit of interest for the for the for the people who have turned up tonight. Um, some good friends of mine, Adrian and Suzanne, have helped out to cook the barbecue and provide teas and coffees. We have uh, we have strawberries, we have raspberries, we have strawberry jam, local eggs, Manx potatoes. It's just it's just endless. Yeah, it really is. And the people in attendance are really enjoying themselves, Pete. Yeah, this is the third one now, and they seem to be just popular. We're hoping to do one every Monday night throughout the summer. Uh, next week, there's a family of seven booked already for next week. 
So, and then we'll probably have a break maybe in September for a couple of months, but we're looking at doing some weekend, if we can get enough like-minded people, we're hoping to do some uh, weekend Christmas markets the second half of November and into, into December where people can get uh, either buy vouchers or novelty gifts for uh, family and friends. Also tonight we have people here from, from DEFA that are showing a great interest in, in local produce as well. Yeah, we have, uh, we have four government representatives from DEFA and uh, UNESCO Biosphere. Um, Joe Ovetti, uh, who wants to do an interview for the UNESCO Biosphere newsletter, which goes out to over a thousand people on the island and globally as well, which is like, wow. That is wow, but it is, in a nutshell here, organic, you know, manx to the max. It is something to be very, very proud of, and it couldn't be more of the UNESCO biosphere if it tried. No, not really, and uh, a lovely setting and a lovely, a, a, a lovely evening with people who are generally interested in reusing green waste and sustainability. Ed, well, a busy night here in Mackled at yes. Pete Camines. You've brought you along your wares. Again, another fantastic Manx product. Yeah, it's uh, something we've been selling for, uh, well, working at for the last near enough five years since I uh, retired from my uh, day job. But um, it's uh, something that keeps us out of trouble and <laughs> it's uh, really good to be able to uh, use wherever possible uh, Manx, Manx wood. This is it. So, so wood turning is a, it's an age old craft, obviously, but is it made more, more easy these days with more manual equipment? Uh, it's made it easier in the fact that uh, my early days was all treadmill, just like the old sewing machines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nowadays it's all electronic, and you can actually use the uh, obviously the varial speed on on the lathe there. But the um, hands-on side of it's still the same. So yeah. it's it's not like a computer uh, assisted thing. It's all hands-on and done by eye. Um, yes, uh, to a certain extent you can take measurements and sort of come up with a desired sort of size of finish. But more often than not, I'll work with the wood and what the, the wood lets me do. And where do you get your wood from? Is it is, you can't just get it out of your back garden? It, you know, all the different colours here alone, it's just stunning. Yeah, well, they, they vary. So, so most of the Manx stuff, I'll uh, be approached by landowners and uh, they'll actually let me know that there's uh, wood available and, uh, you know, do I have an interest in it? Go out there and if it's suitable for what I need, then I'll set to. I'll basically chop it down with the uh, chainsaw, take it back home, make it or turn it into a usable size. Seal it with wax, let it dry off uh, over a couple of years, and then when it's ready to, to use, we'll come back out into the workshop and uh, we'll see what we can make from it then. My golly, that's a long process, a couple of years, Ed. That, you know, that's, that's a bit of a, a mean feat, isn't it? It is, yeah, and unfortunately I, I don't have access to uh, a kiln myself, so we're now run short on uh, sort of dried uh, Manx timber. We'll actually utilise uh, timber that I've obtained from a company in the south of England, and that's uh, very, very good quality. It's all so kiln dried and it's ready for, for use as soon as I get it. Then the uh, the interim, then I'll get uh, back onto the Manx timber again. And we're fortunate enough that uh, the Manx timber sells very quickly on the island, but also to uh, tourists because uh, yeah. we sell our stuff at the farmer's market and through uh, the Manx Museum. So uh, the Manx Museum have reported back to us that uh, a lot of the stuff has been going over to America. Um, my wife, Cathy, she actually does a pyrography on the back of the, any items I turn. And it's... Uh, shows the three legs of man and it'll actually say if it's Manx timber it'll also be marked as Manx uh, for origin so you've got like Manx cherry here and then the three legs of man it's all burned into it and uh, we've actually had feedback from some of our customers globally uh, saying that they've received these uh, items as gifts in various parts of the world Australia, New Zealand, America and, My word, you uh, must be so proud of that, Ed. That is just fantastic. It's lovely to get the feedback, yes. yeah, And I've uh, been fortunate enough as well to have returned customers uh, locally. Uh, they've come to us, they've bought gifts, uh, or actually bought items as gifts, and then not, uh, <laughs> not, not, not handed them over. So they've kept, oh, the, kept them for lovely. themselves and then come back and p purchase something else as a gift. And we've just got a really, really good rapport with, with a, a lot of uh, customers who've become friends now. Oh, that's it, um, exactly. What is your favourite piece to make? Well, obviously, there's a great difference in skill taken into making these products. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's any favourite because uh, each piece you work on, it's um, you're actually putting your, your sort of, um, in a sense, you're putting your soul into it yeah. and you're actually working with what you've got at the time. And the wood itself will actually 
the wood will actually uh, dictate what it wants to be in a sense because you might have an idea what you want to achieve from it but as soon as you start to cut it, it it doesn't actually work the grain may not work the way you think it should do so you actually follow and flow with the grain and uh, you I've generally worked to get the best features out of the wood itself, so uh, it's shown off to its best potential. So if something is a little bit quirky, you can work around that and just make it that extra special, I suppose. Exactly, yes. Uh, I've been lucky enough as well that uh, we've had uh, people sort of approaching us with uh, bits of timber themselves and asking, can I make something specific? The problem there is what you envisage in your mind may not be what will come off the lathe. So I, I, I generally say to people, yeah, I will make something for you. It may not be quite what you see, but it will be whatever the timber gives uh, the best result of. I suppose if you move in house and you want to take a little bit of wherever you've travelled from or to, it's a great idea, isn't it? It really is. It, exactly, yeah. And as I said earlier on there, if it's Manx as well, if it's Manx turned and it's Manx, Manx wood, then it's, it's just got that sort of connection to the island and it's nice to keep uh, timber on the island that's actually, uh, if you like, grown, yeah. grown as part of the uh, seed of the, the island and uh, be passed on for hopefully many generations. Joe Cotsworth from Isle of Man Creameries. What a great evening we've had in Mackles. Hello, Kerry. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, talk about people that you meet as well, and local, and what Pete's about to do for the community. Fantastic. It really is. And what a great turnout. I believe he's been hosting these each Monday for a couple of weeks now. But, uh, yeah, booking up fast, and, and you guys getting involved yeah. too. Great opportunity for us to come along and support him, um, you know, to talk about local, what's happening with COVID, and, you know, the aftermath of that. And I think that, that the solidarity of the Manx people couldn't be any stronger mm. and more robust. Yeah, definitely. That, and that's really and like you say people are coming together in these very very strange times but also I suppose with lockdown on our borders being closed mm. it's making people focus on events like this yeah. you know getting into our Manx countryside mm -hmm. what what a beautiful chance we have yeah it is definitely a good chance and it's also a chance to see what goes into the pig's diet or in the if a, as Pete says you know it, it's not you know it's all about the natural um, environment about where they're living what they're eating and what goes into the meat as well and, and the produce and I think that is, is really really important is it the education behind it all it's all well and good to see a, a packet of, of meat in the supermarket or in the butcher's shop but to come to the farm and, and see how they're raised and Pete very very proud to do so yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, so yeah, we're just really pleased that we can be here tonight to support him, and uh, it was a really good networking opportunity as well, and uh, yeah. keeping that local presence going. Robert Story, well, you're here at Mackles at a great evening with Pete Kameen, but you've brought along your own produce tonight. We're not not just Peter's stuff. Yeah, that's right. So it's um, it's Laxa Pale, which I brew at Odin's Manx Beer, and it's a it's a three point eight pale beer, and um, we use some returned sourdough from Noah Bakehouse in it so that's a very Manx indeed <laughs> yeah well we're completing the circle here and I think that's kind of what Pete is trying to get across with his farm tours in the evening time is is how important you know, Manx life is Manx produce and doing the full circle with, with what he's doing with the green waste and the pigs and, and the produce he's coming off it but also with you the grains they're going to Pete's black pigs yeah that's right so um, I mean we're just down the road um, and we're brewing the beer and um, he comes and collects the grain, feeds it to the pigs, and then adding to that, and especially in this beer, the Laxi beer with the Noah bread, it's uh, it's a nice little circle. And especially after lockdown, when there's a lot more focus on locality and keeping everything, you know, within the borders. How did you get started in doing this for your own business, microbrewery? Oh, that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> and if, after a few pints I'll tell you <laughs> so you've been doing it locally in the area for a couple of years though uh no I mean we only started in 2000 well no November oh my. we only oh started my. in November but I've been brewing since uh, 2013 yeah, yeah. so an old hand at it then no wonder it's quite good stuff I I've had reports here tonight quite a few people are a bit tipsy or a bit light-headed they say <laughs> it's a very it's a very good beer and uh, they're certainly enjoying themselves yeah no it's um it, it's, an, it's a nice session beer and it's a nice location, so... Yeah, why yeah. not? A nice summer's evening and... Where can people to find it, you know? Everyone wants, like you said, to support local. Where can people look out for your beer? Oh, I mean, everywhere from, you know, from the Grosvenor up in the north through to the Traff and the Central and the Mitre and Ramsey, Glenmona. Um, and we've got the Bridge and the Queens in Laxey. Do you want me to list them all? Yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got the Thirsty Pigeon and the Albert in Douglas, uh, the Sidings in Castletown, and then if we swing over to Peel, we've got the White House, the Creek and the Royal. 
It's always nice for people to, you know, when they go out, experience a Manx product. And, and this is a perfect opportunity to do so with friends. Is it designed for one type of person in particular? It's got to be a big beer drinker or, you know. We, we, do, um, we do four beers now. So there's a 3.4 mild, Manx mild, which is very... Um, very good and very popular and then this beer the laxer is a nice 3.8 um, and they're really nice sort of session beers yeah. and then there's a, we do a bitter and a stout which are also very good as well so but the, the thing with beer you know whether it's whether it's an Odin's beer or a Bushy's beer or an Oakles beer or even uh, you know one from from the guys in Laxey uh, the Boson bitter you know yeah. the thing with beer is it's everybody likes something different that's why there's so many variations you know yeah. And that's quite important because, you know, like you and I, are probably quite different from what we like to drink. But it's given everybody the opportunity, isn't it, to get your brand out there, your name out there, and and it, that is, that's really special, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we want. We want people to enjoy it and have a great time and recognise the pump clips and come back again and have another one. That was Peter Kameen and some of the people in attendance at his farm tour in Mackled. Yeah, and uh, involved in the compost and things as well, Kerry, doing a bit for the for the universe. Well, this is it. He's doing a great, great job there with the large black pigs transforming the green waste that he takes from the gardens into compost. And I think he's getting a real little market going there via Facebook. So if you look out for that on Facebook, Farmer Pete Kameen, um, yeah, he inundated with customers wanting that Manx compost. Mm. You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Ready with Kiri Kermode and Simon Clark. Well, I thought we'd find out what was happening in the countryside and the wildflower front uh, because we've missed, I suppose, the times where all the spring flowers will blossom with the lockdown and things like that. So I thought I'd get the lowdown from John Dog Collister. Well, John, I suppose it's with the close down of lots of things. Uh, has it been a, a lean enough year for you being out and about? Well... Uh, I, I keep saying to people, I've, I've not altered what I've done, I've just done what I've been doing anyway. But uh, it's been it's been nice to get out sometimes and, and you go places and there's nobody about, whereas normally you'd be tripping over people, you know, so... Uh, I, I suppose it gave the people of the Isle of Man a chance, because they yeah. couldn't really go anywhere, to, to go and sort of maybe go somewhere for the first time or somewhere they hadn't been for years and appreciate it because I suppose it was that time of year when all this COVID happened that a lot of the wildflowers and things were out. Yeah, it, it was like spring and, and so on. And I, I was talking to people who got out and they went to places and they said it was fantastic and the, the flowers were wonderful and uh, they were doing things that they didn't normally do, you know, getting out in the countryside instead of, you know, go to the pictures or go, going on uh, rides and stuff like that they actually walked in the countryside and saw things and I had people ringing me up I found such and such you know what it is and I hate it you know <laughs> they would say you know it's it's about grows about four inches high and it's got this and that. oh Christ I'm saying to myself <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> but just occasionally something will twig and and you'll think oh I tell you what it might be look up such and such and they would come back to me, you were right, I knew you'd know. Ah, <laughs> you know well. George Quayle used to be like that. George Quayle was wonderful. Uh, George, I'd, I'd tell George I'd found something. I wasn't, sometimes I wasn't sure what it was, and sometimes I'd bring a little piece to him, and he would say to me, that's such and such, and, and you found that at such and such. You know, and I'd say to myself, oh man, heck, yeah. how do you know these things? <laughs> <laughs> has, has it been a good year for, for flowers and bits and pieces out in the countryside though i think it i think it has been yeah um i don't know what the the weather's farming weather has been like but uh yeah there's uh, there's been lots about uh i haven't got out as much as i've done other years i suppose and and lots of times i'd have groups asking me to take them out for wanders around the curragh and things like that anybody listening if they want to wander around the curragh you know that sort of thing get a group together and i'll take you around and but with with the lockdown uh, i had far fewer groups for want of a better word took out but um it i've i've been out there for on my own for a good wander and i i think it's fantastic i just i use the expression i just follow me nose and sometimes you you get to a place where you get stuck and you got to come back well it's, it's no good doing that if you've got 20 people with you you know <laughs> you got to sort out a route that you know you can get through and get out the other end like but, but a lot of places now, people, you know, every every couple of years or so, there, there seems to be getting a, a new little place that's been 
either donated or put to one side for that that's got lots of interest for country people really yes yes it's uh well I, I think people are getting more aware and there are there are people who've got land and they they're saying to themselves what do i want to do with this and all and uh, there's groups prepared to take it on uh, i've done little bits not a lot i must admit with the the the, the tree people uh, they you know they plant forestry uh a fellow called madrill over south is, is kind of top dog in it and i'm terrible on people's um what they're called and groups what they're called but they 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 they, they, they plant trees and they have a, a group day and and things like that and uh, it, it's a long-term thing though and it's you know well you know yourself mm. you, you know you plant something now and it's it's 20 or 30 years before you'll start to see it and you'll pr probably be long gone <laughs> well they've done a big piece up uh, by the slock there the top of the slock lately where some land was donated and yeah uh, you know a group of volunteers got together and done it and yeah that's where it needs to, to get yeah. these bits isn't it yes yeah uh, i was hearing something on my radio the other day about the oak you know the oak trees and so on and uh that, that was a, a mighty project. My children were involved the in it. Millennium the Millennium Oak. Millennium, yeah, that's the one. Millennium yeah. Oak tree. 20 years ago. I know. <laughs> yeah. I say to people, spend time with the kids because in no time they, they're gone. It just seems only like yesterday our kids were coming in our bedroom Christmas morning with, with big bags of stuff and all. And they're all, they've got kids themselves now. It's, it's frightening. Mm. Yeah. But, but there is still plenty to see. I mean, you showed me some pictures of a... Uh, quite a unique thing to do with a fishing rod that's in your garden. Though. Yeah, they, well, we, this is a garden plant. It's called Angel's Fishing Rod, and it's a fantastic plant. It has big, long, it's got long leaves on it, like a, like a palm. It uh, looks like it's fallen over. Yeah, it? well, and then you get these long stalks that have, like, uh, the, the one we've got, you get different colours, like a... a like a purpley red, pinky red colour, and and these hanging in 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 things, and a, a diorama, I think is the correct term, but they're called angel fishing rods, which I think is a fantastic name in itself, and they're a wonderful plant. They uh, everybody should have one in their garden. So uh, diorama. Well, of course, the, the the last time I was talking to you, John, it was um, uh, we're at the the place near the Balavaran Road there, and there was. Was it the angels or, or butterfly something? But, butter, the greater butterfly orchid. Aye, there's a meadow there that um, there's a whole group of people bought it back in the 80s, and uh, to pre, you know to make sure it didn't get sold to somebody who would uh, plough it up. And uh, I got involved, and gradually they've all died, gone, all died off. Not all of them, but the, most of them are gone. And uh, uh, it's now run by Defa and there's, there's grants and it has to be cut at a certain time and all but it's been they paid for it to get fenced but it, it's a wonderful meadow and these things are they look like an angel i suppose they're like a, a white uh, greater butterfly orchid wonderful flower and uh, they, they, they you know it's great to see these sort of things they're they're, they're not rare but they're, they're not that common yeah. so all in all a good year for it and now the the lockdown's been lifted. You sort yeah. of raring to go well, out the Corican places. Yes. Well, um, I've got I've got a group of young ladies. They won't. <laughs> they they they'll think a bit more than young. But anyway, young ladies are uh, wanting to go out on Monday night. I'm taking them for a wander around. I'm probably head off. Follow me nose, as I say. And uh, you just keep going. And uh, uh, I said to them, just put a good pair of boots on. And when you get out there, you, you see wallabies and all. But when you get out there, there's tons of them there's all, they're all over the place and and runs and all and uh, then you get come on like little bits of dubs and all with the uh, all sorts of flowers in it's a, it's a it's a great spot john dog there telling us uh, what had been happening in the world the wild flowers and also that uh, interesting uh, fishing flower that he had in the garden there very attractive it was i've got a picture of that so you'll be able to see that on on the manx radio uh, website page and uh, on the facebook one as well and he is a real character he's so passionate about the manx countryside and i certainly did miss him at tinwell day with his bumby cages and all his manx words there in the tent on the fairfield and uh, but it is lovely to catch up and see what's been going on that was a long 12 weeks lockdown but yeah, the gorse was so beautiful through that period, wasn't it? And the yeah, blue, but, blue skies. Yeah, yeah but as, as we said, we had the chance to, people had the chance to actually go out and have a walk. Well, you know, well, they had nothing to do, some of them. 
And probably a lot of them had seen places of the Isle of Man where they hadn't been for years or never seen. Well, this is it. Even mm. myself, who really enjoys the countryside and spends most of the time now, I still went places that I'd never been before. And I'm sure you did too, did you, Simon? Well, that, that would be causing speculation, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, if you want some of the longer versions of our interviews that we had on this week's Countryside programme, uh, you can download the podcast at Manx Radio's website, manxradio.com. And uh, you'll get uh, some pictures and uh, longer interviews with that. And don't forget, if you've got anything for Countryside, leave a message for Kiri or myself, Simon Clark, here at the radio station, or send an email to countryside at manxradio.com. So we'll be back next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. So from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kiri Kermode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.